How's it going, everybody? My name is Cam White, and welcome back to your favorite weekly horoscope. What the fuck is going on in the universe for September 21st through September 27th of 2020? What the fuck is going on? Um, I just got to say, uh, well, also, let me just get this out of the way before I just go off on a fucking tangent right now. Um, make sure you guys are subscribed to my Twitch. Uh, I will be going live either, I think, Monday if not Sunday night, uh, to record the October horoscope. Uh, make sure you guys are there at the end of my monthly horoscopes. As you guys should know by now, I try to take charts from everybody to, um, or their birth charts so I can do horoscopes for all of the rising signs and everything like that. So if you want to be a part of it, make sure you check out my Twitch, uh, Cam White Astro. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can get the notification when I go live. Um, moving on. Um, so, you know how I said last, be grateful about last week because it's not this week? Yeah, we're at that week. And I just got to say, um, just the shit about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I think I said that right. I don't actually know how to pronounce a lot of things. Um, I cannot fucking believe that they're, that Mitch McConnell's actually, like, this has literally been on my mind since yesterday when the news broke out. It's like how they're literally replacing a Supreme Court justice that fast. Like, that's pretty fucked up. That's so fucking crazy. And that's like, I feel like there's so much context being built up right now that you're going to see for the Mercury retrograde. You're going to see during the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. You're going to see for this Mars retrograde. Like, there's that just really, uh, for one, on the astrology level, um, fills in a lot of context for what the next few months are going to look like. Um, if you haven't checked out the Mercury retrograde already, Mercury stations retrograde exactly opposite Uranus, and it's the day of the Sun-Mars opposition. So it's it's pretty wild, but on a personal level, um, that's really crazy that, like, how in 2016, Mitch McConnell and all of the fucking Republicans, uh, oh, heaven forbid that we put a justice in on election year, and now it's going this fast. And I'm at the point now in my life, and also in my professional life, that if you are any QAnon person, if you support this shit, get the fuck off my channel. I don't want to deal with you. None of your fucking shit even makes fucking sense. Um, because this type of shit is going to affect my life. If I have kids, their lives, their grandkids lives. And I'm at the point now, and this is why, you know, um, for all of my baby boomer viewers out there, um, you know, you guys seem to understand I harp on you guys a lot, but um, there's a big reason why. And it's because a lot of these decisions affect my generation. Like I don't when you like I don't get Social Security. I don't get any of this great luxuries that all these fucking boomers got. So I'm kind of at the point now where, you know, I'm not I'm, I'm definitely more left leaning. I don't really like to say like, oh, I'm this or I'm that. But the QAnon people, you fucking conspiracy theorists people, the people that agree with this type of fucking quick movement. Because also when you have a Supreme Court person come in, it's going to be some bitch ass Ted Cruz or Tom Cotton. And what they're going to do is they're going to say, oh, the election's rigged. Trump's going to keep being president, which is 100 percent ill fucking legal, which is going to then set the press. And I, the reason I'm so passionate about this right now is like this is so like this is really, again, setting in a lot of context for the Jupiter Saturn conjunction like. Shit's about to go fucking down. Like, you know, before the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, I was like, okay, things are going to be kind of big, but I, I didn't know what it was going to look like. You know, this is this is my first go around seeing the Saturn-Pluto uh, conjunction. And after I saw what the fuck happened on the Saturn-Pluto conjunction and the Mars-Saturn conjunction, how COVID basically literally changed the face of humanity, because shit's not going to be normal again for another long-ass fucking time if there ever is another normal. But this type of shit right here is fucking crazy. And I think it's also uh, a really just important detail of so – here for Americans. And if you're around the world and you don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about, sorry if I'm just wasting – we're four minutes into it. Um, but this is just – it's it's absolutely incredible, the absolute fucking corruption that's going on in this fucking country. And if you're a part of that, if you agree with it, fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, we're fucking moving on. Um, I just needed to fucking say that because I'm just at this point where I don't even want to fucking deal with people that believe that shit. Like, just get the fuck away from me. Uh, anyway, moving on to what I don't think is going to be, <laughs> I don't want to say a positive week. Um, this week is going to be pretty intense. But it starts off slow. Like, we don't get, it, it really builds up this week. Um, starting off on Monday, uh, we just have really the moon entering Sagittarius. 
Um, that's kind of only really the thing that's kind of happening. Um, what's nice about the moon going from Scorpio to Sagittarius, though, is the fact that you're getting this sense of like moon and Scorpio where we have to hold on to our emotions. And, you know, the moon's in Scorpio right now as I'm recording this. So this is why I'm kind of like popping off and I'm like really angry about this stuff. But when you have the moon in Scorpio, it's, it's easy to hold on to rage. It's easy to hold on to those emotions. Like I talked about this last week. Like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, uh, I, the thing is I'm trying to listen to my advice of last week of like keeping it cool, not freaking out. But um, it's hard. Like, like I said, this shit's fucking hard. But as the moon goes into Sagittarius on Monday, it's, it's easier to release when you're distracted or, or what some people would say even avoiding. Like, I don't want to say avoid the subject that is ang- that is causing you anger or run away from that. Um, but with the moon in Sagittarius, focus on something else. You know, where where is your vision? Um, when we talk about Sagittarius, we are talking about, you know, kind of the future. I always kind of relate Sagittarius as like looking beyond the horizon. What's on the next horizon? And as the moon goes into Sagittarius, um, it'll eventually be trining Venus and Mars. But as it first gets in, it's not really going to be doing too much. So I feel like this is just going to be a time to really reflect on like, all right, long-term view. What's the next thing? How are we really moving forward? Um, try to have more fun. Try to be more relaxed. Like if you do like this, Monday's a good day to kind of get distracted is a good way to put it. Distract yourself with something, uh, something that you can really like sink your, sink your teeth into. We go into Tuesday. That's when we're going to have the moon apply to a trine with Venus And the sun is going to enter Libra. Now, with the moon making a trine to Venus, this is actually really exciting. Um, Be only because this is like really one of the only so much exciting things, I guess, going on this week. And that's, you know, Venus and Leo, we've talked about it uh, when it comes to connection, when it comes to indulgence, when it comes to um, just feeling good, having fun. Venus and Leo just wants to feel proud, wants to put your heart into it. And the moon in Sagittarius is like, how can I, you know, take it to the next step? What is my vision of what that Venus and Leo can look like? You know, it's kind of like daydreaming about being in the spotlight. Um, and I feel like with this moon and Leo training Venus, this is just a really good time to like whatever passion, whatever, whatever you're like passionate about, whatever you're excited about, like fuel that fire. The sun also goes into Libra that day, which, yes, fall equinox, cool. Uh, equal day, equal night, which is pretty cool. Um, I just like that idea of like equal day, equal night. Uh, but we are going towards the descent where the night overcomes the light and uh, it's going to be darker for longer than it is going to be uh, daytime, or at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. For all you Southern Hemisphere people, congratulations. You're going into summer. Um, but when the sun goes into Libra, you also have to remember this is um, the sun's fall. Like, literally, the sun is falling. It's why it's called fall, too. Or it's not really why, but we're going to say it is. Um, with the sun going into its own sense of fall, our sense of identity, our sense of ego, our sense of uh, auth- like us being authentic with ourselves, it's it's going to struggle. Um, the sun in Libra can really, like, adapt uh, to another person's personality. Like, if you are around someone a lot, it can be easier to feel more of yourself when you're with relationships or when you're with one another or when you're or when your identity is tied into uh, a certain label or a person or something like that Uh, with the sun going into Libra it's just going to be easier to not be as confident Um, so my suggestion with that is while the moon's in Sag trining Venus like pump up yourself as much as you can because of the sun and Libra things are going to be kind of calming down and that's good we want things to kind of calm down in a sense right like I, I mean I don't think I feel like I don't think I speak alone when I say that Anyway, we go into Wednesday. Uh, This is where shit kind of gets really crazy. Um, First things first, Mercury goes into shadow. Um, (laughs) um, Okay, hold on. I want to talk about that, but this so much is going on on Wednesday. So Mercury enters shadow. Mercury squares Saturn as it enters shadow. Important, like it's kind of that's very very important for the future. And the moon goes into Capricorn all at the same time. It will. The moon will also make a trine to Mars, but uh, that's not really as important. Now let's look at the chart. So here's the moon make, leaving that trine with Mars, right about to go into Capricorn. Um, Mercury enters shadow. So starting September 23rd, uh, moving on until November 3rd, when Mercury stations direct, that's basically in, from now until literally election day. Like, shit's about to fucking pop off. Uh, notice how when Mercury enters shadow, it's exactly squaring Saturn. 
So Mercury and Libra, where there should be balance, where there should be, um, you know, harmony in communication um, and a sense of consensus, it's squaring Saturn, where Saturn in Capricorn is going, no, we're not going to do what's fair because, you know, why fucking not? Um, with Mercury squaring Saturn, Mercury has no essential dignity here. Like, I'm only looking at Zodiac, uh, Zodiac and I'm, I have no idea if it's actually in if its own terms or face. But uh, with Mercury squaring Saturn opposite Mars, Mercury's struggling to bring two pieces together here in Libra. As it's squaring Saturn, like, this is kind of like, you know, <laughs> um, this is kind of like a very small person trying to discipline or teach a really big huge scary person you know like hey maybe you shouldn't do that the big scary person's like what the fuck are you gonna do about it um mercury is in the superior position in this square but saturn and pluto plus jupiter is, i feel like has a lot more of authority in this situation so to reel it back in um as far as personal stuff goes you're going to see something occur. You're probably going to have a, uh, a try to have a conversation to relate, and the other party is going to be like, no, uh, or it's going to be a big block. Um, I guarantee it's like I. You can literally almost analogize the U.S. political situation with your personal life. Like it's going to be almost like synonymous. Mercury, you're gonna. It's going to be the situation where like, hey, where can we relate? Where can we literally like fucking put Brit? bring a bridge to build a bridge together where can we relate and saturn and pluto is just saying no like no we're not even going to fucking do it we're not even going to fucking consider it we're just going to keep doing our thing um and from that moment on that topic that conversation that whatever mercury was kind of do was, is doing in your chart is going to be kind of the next focus for the next couple of weeks until literally like election day and even beyond that but um the other thing i wanted to mention is if you notice, the moon goes into Capricorn. And that was something I put up in here. With the moon going into Capricorn, and this is why I kind of specifically said, like, this week is going to suck last week, is because while the moon's going into Capricorn, uh, you know, like, if this was maybe, like, with the moon in Leo or Taurus or even something like that, like, maybe it'd be a little bit better. But I feel like with the moon in Capricorn, bringing illumination um, at its also... Um, <clears throat> waxing phase where it's gaining in light over on this Capricorn stuff. Um, I think it's highlighting a lot of, you know, it's, it's kind of like highlighting a blind spot. Like, Hey, this is a problem. This is something that you need to look out for. This is something that can potentially be a pitfall. And so I think on Wednesday, there's going to be a lot of scary energy. It's going to feel like, you know, it, again, we talked last week about Mercury and Libra being a fucking pushover, being a doormat. Um, it, it's going to be really easy to feel like you can't push any buttons or you can't do this. You can't do that. Um, and, and the thing is, it's not time to be assertive yet. It's not time. It will be soon, but not yet. Uh, and I feel like with the moon and Capricorn, this is more of about going, okay, um, what's not working? What do we, you know, um, it's the same idea with this, uh, I guess the political situation too right now. Um, there's no need, I guess, to get your like emotions involved in whatever you're doing on Wednesday. I always talk about the moon and Capricorn. Check out. Just do what you got to do to get the work done. And there's going to be some gnarly conversations that are had. There's going to be some gnarly things that kind of go down on Wednesday that you're going to have to just kind of suck up. You know, um, that's really the best way. I, you know, it, something that's really shitty, in my opinion, about the overall astrology community or just the spiritual community and broad is that. Since like the 60s, everything's spun towards like, oh, how can we be positive or how can things be, you know, better and life's like if there is one thing that I want you guys to understand about this part, this time in history and this time in the astrology is that like not everything is fucking easy and sometimes you have to toughen up and sometimes you have to do shit that you don't want to fucking do in order to get the result that you want and not even get the result you want just to fucking get by. And like, you know, we have lived in a hundred years of pure fucking bliss, essentially. Like my generation, even the generation before me, we've had a great, everyone in the whole world basically has had a great compared to 200 years ago. But this is the first time in humanity where we've never had to like struggle like our ancestors have for eons of time. And I think one of the things that's really hurting right now is 
with how much struggle the whole world's going through, it's, we're not used to that. We're not used to having the sense of like, oh shit, there bad times actually can be ahead. Um, and the reason I'm kind of bringing all this up is, you know, this isn't necessarily a time of like, oh, how can we make things good? How can how can things be positive? Like, I, I don't watch too many other astrologers' horoscopes. I don't know if a lot of people are saying that, but if they are, fuck them. Like, this shit's raw and real right now. Like, what do you have to do to get by? What do you have to do, like, you know, what it's kind of like if you're at a if you're having a hard day at work you can't just be like hey boss i'm upset i'm gonna go home they're gonna be like well then you're fucking fired like what do you tell yourself to get through those hard times what is that internal dialogue what are you adjusting to how fucking tough are you like that's really the fucking question here is how strong are you how well can you take this shit? And this is kind of the test right now. Like this isn't for, this isn't about being easy. This isn't about even trying to remain positive. This is just like, literally, how are you going to get through this? And you got to do whatever the fuck it takes to get through this. I don't know what that looks like because we all live our own different lives, but do whatever the fuck it takes to get through this. Toughen up, be fucking serious. Don't take this as a fucking joke. Like, you know, it, I don't know. I'm. We need to fucking move on. I'm fucking getting too amped up into this. Anyway, um... So anyway, we move into Thursday. Um, this is where, you know, I'm. I'm. So what's 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 hard, I guess, uh, to really look at specifically is the fact that, uh, when you go from Wednesday to Thursday, Mercury first enters shadow and immediately squares Saturn as it enters shadow. So that's that's going to be a big deal as we come up. But then right after Mercury squares Saturn, it uh, it goes opposite Mars. So this is kind of like a rejection, and then instantly being like, well, fuck that. Like instantly going like, okay, well that passiveness isn't going to work. Um, it's not necessarily the day where you're going to go, oh, well, let me just blow up in your face. Let me just, you know, argue against you or something like that. You're just going to realize being like being Mercury and Libra probably isn't going to fucking work. Um, Mercury opposite Mars uh, is – so <laughs> what's always fair isn't always what's going to work. Something that I think Libra placements really struggle with is things having to be fair. And the unfortunate part of this, of living this human life is life is not fucking fair at all. Um, I think it's very justified and also very like righteous of people to try to act fairly. But that's also, you know, who are you to fucking say what's fair and what's right? I think as Mercury is opposite Mars, this is going to be the time where we go, okay, if I'm getting this rejection in order for things to, you know, this is kind of like, <laughs> imagine you're a prisoner and Mercury and Libra squaring Saturn and Pluto is like going up to the warden and be like, can I please, can I please be released? Like, I don't want to be in prison anymore. And then this warden goes, no, now you get to, you know, now you got an additional 10 years. Fuck you. Mercury opposite Mars is like, okay, um, if that's not going to work, then me and all the other prisoners are just going to riot. Um, the only problem with Mercury opposite Mars is it's going to be really easy to just, the scales aren't just going to be like, you know, trying to be balanced. It's going to be easy to jump from this side to this side. So the volatility is like high. Um, so the thing is with astrology is it's going to happen no matter what. It's about doing your best to be aware of what you're going through and being aware of what tools you have to not let your emotions or even the outside world get the best of you. Uh, what are you going to do to, um, I guess, fix that? Mercury opposite Mars retrograde. It's like, okay, that didn't work. What else can we do to create the balance here? What else can we do? Mars is retrograde right now, right? Like, what do we got to go back on? What do we got to rework? What do we got to re-justify? Um, the other thing with um, Thursday is the moon is going to be applying to Jupiter for the most of the day. So with the moon starting to make that opposite, uh, not opposition, that conjunction with Jupiter, it's going to be more of like, there is a game plan that we can create. We do have a plan B. Like, it's the moon conjoining Jupiter and Capricorn. It's like, well, okay, if this didn't work, what are our other options? And, you know, with everything going on, this is all cardinal stuff. There's a plan A and there's a plan B. There's a plan C. There's a plan A1, a plan A2, a plan A3. You can go down the list. Um, as the moon's uh, applying to Jupiter, you know, ask yourself, give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Try to see things more, not necessarily optimistically in the idealistic sense that isn't grounded in reality. This is Jupiter and Capricorn. Like, what is a, the most realistic, um, positive thing that can happen? And set your sights on that. 
Don't try to go above and don't try to go below. And as the moon's applying to Jupiter, like, yes, Mercury's opposite Saturn. I mean, Mercury's opposite Mars. You're going to be mad. You're going to be frustrated. Rejection is fucking hard. But as the moon's conjoining Jupiter, it's like, okay, well, how can we see the best in this situation? How can I look at this in a constructive format? Not necessarily a positive format. And I want to reinforce that idea because I just talked about, like, this is not easy fucking times. And this isn't supposed to be like, oh, everything's going to be good in one day. Uh, you know, let's just keep dreaming about the future. But this is about going like, okay, realistically, what's the best case scenario here? Um, how can things look? And I think on Thursday, it's also going to be Jupiter's day. This is not necessarily – it's going to be a time to think positively um, as much as you can, but more pragmatically. Sometimes realistic is, po is positive. Sometimes pragmatic is positive. It really just depends on the context for everything. So anyway, we go on to Friday. Uh, the moon will then, of course, conjoin Saturn and conjoin Pluto. And it's going to square Mars. Uh, so if this is your first day in astrology, you're probably like, what? Everyone else is going, Ugh, that's going to that's gonna suck. And this is another thing that I was kind of like, yeah, this week's going to suck. Um, the moon smashing Pluto and Jupiter, I mean, and Saturn, and then squaring Mars basically while nothing else is going on. The moon conjoining Jupiter on Thursday is going to be like, hey, you know, how can we see things more, you know, like what's the plan? Um, Jupiter's theoretical. It, Mercury is more of like, hey, I have an idea. Jupiter's like, well, what if, right? Saturn, while the moon conjoins Saturn, this is going to be like a, either it works or it doesn't. And as the moon is squaring Mars as well, there is a lot of tension in order for, uh, that you are going to feel on yourself in order for things to work in the plan that you have. So I have two pieces of advice. One, if you're going to make a plan, stick to the fucking plan. My second piece of advice is if that plan doesn't work, you've got to let it go. You know, you like this is something that everyone has been saying lately or for the past couple years. It's like, you know, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting the same result. When that moon is in Capricorn and it's conjoining Saturn and it's squaring Mars and something that you're doing is not working, you have got to drop it there. Otherwise, it's just literally going to hurt you more than it's going to bring you any positivity. Um, on Friday, it's going to be like, you know, and this is moon and Capricorn stuff. This is going to be like, um, you know, sometimes you have to kind of check out emotionally in order to do hard emotional work, right? Um same thing as like having a – if you guys have ever had to have like a really in, intense conversation with someone or a, uh, uh, just a really important conversation, it, sometimes it's easier to just be moon and Capricorn like, hey, I, I, business is business. This is just my job. This is just what I've got to do type thing. Um, I think as the moon conjoins Saturn though, there is this restriction. There is this pulling back. And as it's squaring Mars, I don't think Mars retrograde is – I don't think Mars and Aries is really going to be that happy. But um, – I don't think I, I don't remember if I said this or not last week. There's not a whole lot of winners in the astrology right now. Um, there's a lot of anger and resentment on both sides. Um, and again, like I said earlier, a lot of the U.S. political situation you can analogize for your own personal life. There's a lot of tension on both sides. There's a lot of heat. There's a lot of frustration. Uh, whether it's you in a relationship, whether it's you in a, uh, your job, whether it's you and even a physical item that you have that you're like a car or something. Both things are going through it right now. No one is seeing eye to eye. Nothing is clear right now. So when you are in those situations, you have to expect that no one's going to walk out a winner. No one's going to walk out happy. So the best thing you can do is damage control. It's the same idea with these California fires, which I'm not even going to go into that, but when it comes to these fires, they have to let a lot of it just burn because they just don't have, like, you can't just go up and be like, oh, we have all of this water to go and stop the fire. They let part of it burn and then they go, okay, where are we going to contain it at? Where are we going to kind of, you know, it's kind of like um, letting someone have their anger, like rage out, right? Like a rage room. Um, you don't just rage out and, you know, uh, uh, wherever the fuck you want, you, you have a set place for it, right? Um, during this time, it's just going to be like, where where can you, I guess, um, have a safe space for that? Anyway, um, let's move on. This week sucks. Whoops, wrong button. Um, oh, whoops, we get into Saturday. And um, 
as we get into Saturday, the moon's going to enter Aquarius and immediately make a square to Uranus, which is good and bad. So the reason I say good and bad is uh, as the moon enters Aquarius, there is this uh, sigh of relief that we're just out of the Capricorn mess because I'm telling you guys, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it is going to feel rough. It is going to suck ass. And I want to tell you right now, like, just also, too, during these times, like, while the moon's in Capricorn, yeah, you're going to be kind of checked out emotionally in order to get stuff done. But remember how you feel. Like, this isn't a time to be like, oh, these emotions aren't important. These emotions don't matter. Like, um, it, it, I guess the way to look at it is just like, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't have a I don't really know. Anyway, I to move forward because we're like 25 minutes into this shit. Um, oops, wrong button. So the moon goes into Aquarius, right? Breath of fresh air. At least we're out of the Capricorn zone. But the moon in Aquarius squaring Uranus is there is some, you know, there is some emotionally charged reason to outcast, to alienate, to run away, to be distant to divide aquarius is a dual bodied sign and with aquarius you're either with us or against us type thing you're either one of us or you're on your fucking own and so on saturday also mind you this is the moon squaring uranus it's going to be like oh well i'm not comfortable i need to get the fuck out of here i need to scram um if you want to run away on saturday go for it just come back you know don't don't leave forever. But as the moon scoring Uranus, uh, uh, you know, it, it's going to be you're, you're it's going to be like, I need to get out of here. I need to at least get out of this stuffiness of the Capricorn energy. And it's going to be very volatile. It's going to be very quick. Um, and at least like, you know, it's kind of like imagine this is this might be a weird analogy. Um, but imagine you are an addict and you are having an intervention and everyone you love is in the room saying this is your problem. This is your problem. I always thought interventions were just kind of like a little bit hardcore, but I always imagine if I was in that situation, I'd probably need at one point to like just get out of the room and just like get some fresh air, like, you know, and that's like defense mechanisms and shit like that. But that's how Saturday is going to look. There's going to be a lot of pressure. A lot of shit's going to go on. And sometimes you just need a fucking breather. Sometimes you just need to get out of the, um, excuse me, I'm picking my eye. I just got shit in it. Um, you just going to, sometimes you just need to get out of the fire in order to, um, see things clearer. Moon in Aquarius, take a step back, see things from a different view. As it's squaring Uranus, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to, you know, that you're going to have this answer and everything's going to be perfect all of a sudden. But seeing that different view will plant a seed in your mind for later on, and that will come up later. So, uh, Saturday, uh, whoops, wrong button too. Uh, that's what Saturday's looking like. Then we get into Sunday, and this is where shit gets even more crazy. Like it literally, again, I can't emphasize this enough. It only gets crazy from here on out. Like if you thought you saw crazy this year, this is where it gets way more fucking crazy. And it does, it literally does not stop from here until January. January is when it probably calms down a little bit, but then it gets even crazier as Jan like January. It's like where at least we know where we're at. Uh, and But January and February are different. They're completely different worlds, but I can't emphasize this enough. From here until January, shit is crazy. Shit is changing. Shit is different, and you're gonna just have to get used to it because uh, you really don't have a fucking choice here. Like, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be challenging. There's gonna be uh, learning curves, but you know. And I don't mean to be so doom and gloom right now, but. You know, because I'm not really, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, I'm not usually, I, I don't want to say I'm not usually, a long time ago is a lot more positive. Um, and I still believe I'm, I am a positive person and that I do put a positive spin into this. But this is also like, I don't like lying. <laughs> and I also don't like, I like brutal honesty. I like realism. And this is just like, you know, I'm sorry that your whole life and that everything in the astrology in the universe can't be love and light and peace and prosperity. Like we can handle five or six months of bullshit like or and if you can't, we're just going to have to fucking figure out how. But hey, all that's going to do is help us grow, help us learn. Like that's the one thing I want to say is like 
These tough times are all are just not for nothing. This is gonna show you what the fuck you're made of. This is gonna show you what you can accomplish. This is gonna show you what the fuck you're about, what your true morals are, what your values are, what can you sustain? You know what I mean? Like muscle isn't built by sitting, right? It's built through tension. It's built through stress. It's built through time under that tension. And you know, it sucks working out when you're doing a lot of heavy lifting. It sucks in the middle of it. But then when you see those muscles, when you see those results, you go, wow, like, I'm so glad I went through that. And I'm not saying this is you're you probably actually will end up being glad that you went through this shit. But I'm telling you right now in the moment, it's going to suck. But when you look back and you're be like, damn, that fucking taught me something. And if you're not learning something from this, like, then you're not a fucking awake. Like, this is all stuff that you guys should be taking in going like, what am I learning? What am I doing differently in my life? Um, you know, which is what are, take this shit fucking in. Like as my, some of my teachers in high school would say like, hint, hint, this is going to be on the fucking test. Like pay the fuck attention, learn this shit now, write some fucking notes while you can. Don't just, you know, check out and, you know, just hope that one day things will get better. Like the only way things are going to get better is when you take action. Like you're the only one that's going to be able to do something. So you might as well be on your side pump yourself up and also like show the fucking world who's boss. Cause like, trust me, like I said last week, if you can get through this, you can get through anything, but you've got to get through it first and you've got to be able to prove to yourself that. So anyway, we get into Sunday. That's when first things first, uh, shit. What was it? Hold on. Wrong button again. Um, Mercury enters Scorpio. So let's start with that. Uh, as Mercury enters Scorpio, um, it's not Mercury and Libra where, you know, we're kind of passive. We're like, it's cool, 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 cool. You know, no, no big deal. Mercury and Scorpio is like going for the fucking jugular. Like, mm, yeah, no, I'm not buying that bullshit. Like it's, and also too, this is where Mercury is going to retrograde. Like, uh, there's going to, with communication, like, I feel like I'm channeling Mercury and Scorpio. Like this isn't a time to be passive. Like be frank, be fucking blunt, be fucking real, go for the jugular. The only important thing is with Mercury and Scorpio is learn how to zoom out. Like with Mercury and Scorpio, it's easy to get that tunnel vision of like, especially with just all of the Mars energy going on right now. Starting on Sunday, it's going to be easy to just get that tunnel vision of like, this is what I'm focused on. This is the only thing I see. And this is how I see it. It's fixed sign energy, right? Things remain the same. Um, that can be very uh, motivating and it's going to help you later on. And it's just a part of the cycle right now. But just know how to step back for a minute. For all my Gen Z millennial people out there, uh, if you guys watch The Iron Giant, uh, my one of my favorite analogies with Mercury and Scorpio is like the Iron Giant's like dent in its head. Like when it has the dent, it's like all like docile and like really nice and then it like pops out. And it's like fucking laser eyes, nuclear arsenal, like all ready to go. If you've never seen The Iron Giant, highly recommend that movie. It's so fucking good. But um, with Mercury and Scorpio, like – you're, it's going to be easy to be zoomed in. You also have to know when to zoom out and to kind of go like, whoa, okay, I kind of got a little bit deep in that. Um, not only for your, not only for others' sake, but mostly for your own sake. The other thing that we've got going on is Mars square Saturn begins. This is going to be a transit that lasts a minute. And as you can tell, uh, let me bring this up. It's at 25.50 and 25.20. Uh, so this is technically, um, it technically uh, it goes exact next week, um, but it basically begins starting on Sunday. And Mars square Saturn, let's reflect back to the last time Mars square Saturn. That was going to be not even that long ago. That would have been maybe the middle of August. Um, fuck, I don't even remember at this point. I probably should have. I probably should know. Someone in the comments below, tell me when it, when was the first day Mars square Saturn? Because um, that's going to help you guys go, oh yeah, what was going on that day? Because whatever was going on that day, you're going to probably come back to it now. Uh, you know, what's getting in your way from stopping you. Mars squaring Saturn the first time was like, why am I, why is this not working? Now is Mars is retrograde squaring Saturn. This is like, oh, I understand what I'm doing that doesn't work. And that's the thing. Like, it's so important to understand the thing that you are doing or the thing that's happening that doesn't work anymore. It's not going to be easy. It is going to challenge you. It's going to be challenging to look at the issue and be like, oh, this is what I'm doing wrong. It's kind of like abstract art. You got to like, 
it's not about you know getting hyper i mean mercury with scorpio it's going to be easy to lock things in right but maybe that step out is what you need in order to see the bigger picture but as mars is squaring saturn while it's retrograde this is realizing like that you didn't have enough momentum to go up that hill the first time that you you know you can't just push everything out of your way like grit and muscle and just trying to shove everything and push the wall down isn't going to work we have to be fucking smart about this shit there one of my favorite sayings of all time is i again i tell everyone this work smarter not harder like and it's such simple advice but literally i know so many people that don't listen to that shit and i don't know why because mars squaring saturn if you just exhaust yourself trying to be like the kool-aid man and break down the fucking wall it's like me personally I, i'm a pretty big dude but I can't break down no brick wall. I'm only human. As Mars is retrograde squaring Saturn, you need to realize the brick wall that's in your face isn't going to come down by your bare hands. And maybe you can go underneath it. Maybe you can go over it. Maybe you can go around it. Maybe you can get a bunch of other people to break it with you. But you're not going to be able to do it by yourself and you're not going to be able to do it the way that you're doing it. So while Mars is squaring Saturn on Sunday, as that begins, and I'm going to be talking about this all next week, what are you doing that's not working and what are you going to do about it? Like, come up with a different plan. Think of something else. As Mars square Saturn, you're going to hit the no. You are going to hit the wall. You are going to realize that you need to do something different. I cannot emphasize that enough. Also on Sunday, the moon is opposite Venus, which also I think is a little bit better than everything else. Um, as the moon is opposite Venus, this gives us a, a good look, right? The moon in Aquarius is like, this is what works for everybody else. And Venus and Leo is like, but this is what I want to do. <laughs> and there has to be some type of um, consensus. There has to be some type of um, communication almost between the moon and Venus of like, hey, you know, uh, how can I align my values and what I enjoy with what um, the greater sense of, you know, my community or my people also recognize and what's also good for them. The moon is looking at Venus and the Venus and Venus is looking at the moon here. Um, Venus is saying, you know, this is what I'm proud of. This is what my heart wants. And the moon in Aquarius is like, well, can you see that in a different light? Maybe can you take an abstract view of what exactly it is that you want and mind you we're getting ready for the venus for venus trying mars starting next monday um we we've got shit to look forward to um but right now i think with the moon opposite venus it's kind of like we're gonna hit that wall with mars square saturn and the que and, and the question really becomes is not can i break through that wall it's the moon opposite venus is like do i want to get what's over that wall that i actually want What's on the other side of that wall? What is this wall stopping me from? And it's not necessarily, I'm not trying to say this to where, oh, you should give up trying to break it down the wall or anything. It's just, you got to ask yourself, what's important for you? What do you actually want? Um, you know, what do you want to attract? What do you want to bring towards yourself? And can you see a different way to get that? Like one of my favorite things about when it comes to manifesting, when it comes to just doing that type of work, like you can manifest anything you want. But it's up to you to recognize when you have manifested that thing. Because if you don't recognize it, you're never going to fucking notice that you manifested what you what you asked for. And so um, it is important to know what you're asking for. It's important to be very clear on what your wants are. Otherwise, you're going to be bringing in shit that, you know, if you're like, and this is something I'm personally struggling with because I have Mars that you're getting in my fifth house. I have no idea what I fucking want to do with my life. And it's like, oh, it's driving me crazy. And I'm really nervous because something that this happens to me a lot. I'm also a moon in Libra where I'll be like, I don't know what I want. And then the universe just throws me a bunch of shit where I'm like, it's all stuff that I'm like, I'm not sure if I want that. I'm not sure if I want that. I'm not sure if I want that. And it's like, well, you're in the universe to me is always like, well, you keep asking for stuff that you, you, you keep saying to me, Hey, I don't know what I want. So I'm giving you stuff that you're also not sure about. Um, and I don't think this is necessarily a time to be sure. I think, you know, uh, there's a valuable lesson in, not being able to receive what you want. Like Mars squaring Saturn, like there's a valuable lesson in um, hitting that brick wall. Like, are you gonna give up or are you just gonna try to do something different that might actually work? Because again, uh, a lot of this, to simplify this, a lot of this is just doing something different in order to get what you want. Because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, 
it's not, you're going to keep getting the same result. And to even simplify this more, and this goes for both me, the younger people that watch this, and you old folk that watch this, because I know I got a ton of you guys that are beyond 60 that watch my videos. Like, this is just a part of growing up. This is just a part of life. Like, sometimes you hit a wall, and sometimes you have to feel like you failed, and sometimes you have to feel like you've got to give up. Sometimes you have to feel like there's, there's just something blocking you from what you want. And before you deny that, like deny yourself that feeling, accept it. Like it's so important to accept when you are not strong enough to do something because that's when you can allow yourself to, you know, go, okay, I can't do this on my own. Okay. I can't, you know, I can't do this. So that's going to just basically allow room into, for you to learn how to do something different. It's going to give you the comp, not, not only the confidence, but the actual focus of like, Hey, I can't do this. So I need to learn how to do it. How else can I do it? It's going to force you to open up your mind. And I think that's one of the more important things of moon, the moon and Aquarius opposite Venus and Leo. Open up your mind to what it is that you actually want. Uh, what is the essence? What is the feeling? What are the emotions that come with what you want? Not just what it looks like. And that's a big thing with Venus and Leo. Um, but with Leo in general, don't be so worried about what it looks like and be more worried about what it feels like. What, how your body reacts to literally like getting what you want. Um, so that's this week. Um, this week is fucking hard. This week is this, and this is the beginning. It starts now. The next couple of weeks and months, they're going to be fucking crazy. And, um, it's going to be hard. It's going to be really fucking hard. There's nothing, there's nothing about the astrology that says, oh, this is going to be a walk in the park and everything's going to be great and easy. And if it's going great and easy for you, then you got fucking lucky and you should definitely acknowledge that because right now for a lot of fucking people this is hard whether it's uh outside circumstances or internal circumstances um but recognize that this is a hard time recognize that you are going through it but also recognize that you have everything that it takes to get to the other side of it it's just a matter of your commitment to that vision it's a matter of keeping that goal in mind um one of the most important things is not to lose sight of what those goals are why are you breaking through this wall to begin with? Why are you even here? You know, these are, it's just important to, you know, when you're in the middle of the fight, it can be hard to remember why you're fighting to begin with because of all of the realities that you're experiencing. Maybe take a moment this week to take a step back. Maybe while the moon's in Aquarius to realize what are you fighting for? What are you trying to get out of all of this? What, what is the purpose behind all of this? And when you're clear on your purpose, when you're clear on your vision, that's when you know, like, it's not about, oh, I can't break this wall down. It's about, well, fuck breaking the wall down. I'm going to go over the wall. I'm going to go under the wall. I'm going to fucking go around the wall. I'm going to fucking create a human chain of people to get around the wall. I'm going to fucking buy a ladder and get over the wall. Like, you just have to be clear on your purpose. You have to be clear on your vision. And you have to want whatever's on the other side of that more than you want anything else. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to taste so good. It's going to feel so good when you get through these next couple weeks, next couple months, and you get to your goal. Because it's the difference between, and I talk a lot, I've been talking more and more about this, of uh, it's the difference between privilege and, well, not privilege. I don't know what the opposite of that is, but... Um, when you get something handed to you because of your circumstances, you don't understand how much that can be worth to someone versus when you have worked for it, when you've put your fucking all into something and then you get the reward, it feels way better than anything else, than, than just being handed it to, you know, it's about earning it. And I think that's one of the things to really get about this Mars retrograde squaring Saturn. If you want it, you've got to earn it. This is not, and this is <laughs> on another random tangent, People keep blaming the idea of capitalism for a lot of things. And yes, capitalism is very problematic. But in this life, you have to work and you have to earn what you have. There is no other way around it. It does not get handed to you. You have to go out of your way and get it yourself. And this is the time where you got to go, hey, I've got, a, I've got no other choice but to go and fucking do it myself. Um, again, guys, just fucking all I can say is like, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you can do it. You can go through it like, you know, blah, 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 blah. I, I think it's up to you guys to have that talk with yourself. Why aren't you telling yourself that you can go through it? It's not my fucking job to say, oh, you can do it. You're, 
you can get through it. It's that's your fucking job. All I'm saying is that it's going to be challenging. So your self-talk better be really fucking real right now. And it better not be light footed. Like be real with yourself, have those conversations. And if you want, if you want it, you can do it. You just got to be real about it with yourself. Um, so I'm going to leave you with that. It's going to be a hard road ahead, but you know, show yourself, show yourself that you can get through it. Show yourself who's fucking boss. And, uh, when we get to the other side, when we start getting into January and February, you'll see those differences. Um, Next week, um, we have Venus trining Mars. We have um, – so next week actually looks pretty positive. Let me also just say that too. Like this week is going to be like – and I'm, I'm 45 minutes into this already. But next this week is going to be like, wow, we really see the challenges ahead. Next week seems more of like the prep. Like, all right, like we're starting to get some stuff together because next week we have Venus making a trine to Mars. Next week, Saturn stations direct, which – I kind of think is going to be good um, in of, in some respects, not all of them. Uh, Mars does square Saturn next week, which is going to be hard. We're, but we we already know that we already know that shit's going to get hard. We also have the full moon in Aries next week, which at least is going to illuminate. Like it's literally the full moon in Aries. What do we do now? Like <laughs> what what are we going to do? Like now that things are in Libra season, like what are we uh, after? What are we attacking? What are we going for? And next week we have Venus going into Virgo, which I don't know. Venus and Virgo sounds, you know, the thing is Venus is going into detriment in Virgo, or not detriment, uh, fall in Virgo, but she'll conjoin Regulus first off. And then Venus only basically makes good aspects. Venus will eventually try and Uranus. It's going to go opposite Neptune and then try and Jupiter, try and Pluto, try and Saturn. Um, so it's also going to sextile Mercury or well, kind of sextile Mercury. That's kind of a longer story, but um there is um to just going to next week um yeah there's some more the the one thing i want to say too before just to end this um just like watching a movie do not try to get ahead of yourself of what you think the ending is going to look like just pay attention to the context pay attention to where you know if something happens at the end and something that happened in the beginning comes back over you're not going confused and going whoa whoa who's that person why are they here like just pay attention, watch the movie, and you're going to see what happens at the end of it. Um, but this is just um, – I, I can't emphasize this enough. This is – this week we're going to realize what the fuck we're facing, what the fuck we're up against. Next week we're going to go like, okay, here, where's my battle armor? How do I get ready for this? So this week, you know, it's not about going – like I, I, I just need to reiterate this again. It's not about going – Hey, like, you know, oh, things are hard, but I can get through it. Like, take it in that this is hard. Like, you know, it's it's, it's going to be easy. Like the moon in Capricorn, it's going to be easy to just check out and be like, oh, you know, I'm not here. This isn't happening. This is fine. Like, I don't, I kind of don't like that image of like the, 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 the dog with the coffee cup in the house of fire because it's so fucking passive. Like, wake the fuck up. Like, shit's on, the fucking house is on fire. You're just going to sit there like a fucking dumbass or are you going to get the fuck out? Like, or are you gonna do something about it? That's what that's just what drives me crazy about that image. And everyone's just like, everyone is just in this complete consensus that we're not gonna do anything. That we're just gonna sit here in a, the house is on fire, and we're literally just gonna fucking sit here and kick back like nothing's fucking happening. No, like the house is burning. Are you gonna do something about it? And are you gonna wake up to the fact that the house is on fire, that something is happening, uh, or are you just gonna sit there and burn alive? So. I don't know what I'm saying at this point. Thank you guys for listening to me just fucking riff and rant. Uh, if I piss you guys off, sorry. I'm not really here to please anyone anymore. I'm just, <laughs> shit's fucking real right now. This is, uh, this is real fucking life. Um, so with that being said, I'll see you guys next week. Monthly horoscope. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe to my Twitch to get the notification when I go live. Um, Oct I'm very excited to talk all about October because there's a lot going on in October. So with that being said, take care. Thank you guys. I love you and I'll see you next week.